uh, like if you've ever tried to texture other people's models and thought, wow, that part of the unwrap, you know, if it would have been unwrapped like this instead of like this, it would have been so much easier. Then, like, that's that's just how you need to unwrap it because that's something you personally, like, prefer doing. Ah, oh, go away. Right, so this is like what's left of the original sideways planar map. So if you just like drag like that, you can see what you have left to unwrap, and it's not very much here. So we just need to unwrap that and this section on the back, and then whatever else I've missed, which I think is just the indent on the top where the safety switch is. Oh, and this, where the hell that is. Ah, that part. Uh, plane of Z, that. You can probably even stick that up there. So we know what that is now on the unwrap. And this part. Oh, best line. No, that's not good. Well, Z's going to have it close to plane it. But I don't know if you may or know you could do this. You can actually go in with the. You should be able to go in with the rotate tool. But you can't. Okay, so anyway, let's just play the best to line that. And that's good enough. Let's try relaxing that and see if that... No, not really. That's not what we want. Hmm. There we go, I had hidden the gizmo by accident because I'm a retard. You can actually uh, like move and rotate the axis that it's being unwrapped on. So if you like go to unwrap and go to the Z, and then you can rotate the gizmo like so. So that's actually a better match to where the actual, like the, if, if you're not on a planar angle, to where the thing is. And then we can try relaxing this and see if this works any better, marginally. Uh, that looks pretty much close enough. So that will do for that. And I think that's all of the segments there for that particular thing. So that's that finished. And I'm just going to collapse the stack on that and move on to something else. So let's get some of these tubular shapes out of the way because they're pretty simple. And like uh, some of this stuff has been like kind of half unwrapped before and then not but it's easier to just start from scratch really. Like you don't want to go with like a half finished unwrap and go and try and fix everything that's in there because it just often so it's so much more often is easier to just start from the beginning and make sure everything is right from the start rather than just going into something that's half finished and try and fix what's broken in it. So the scene we want to have like on the bottom part here, and that part needs to be plain wrapped. And this part as well is going to need to be plain wrapped because it's on a separate smoothing group, or on the when you bake the norms normal maps, this is going to be on separate smoothing groups. So uh, generally you 
for real hard edges like this, they're very hard normal maps to deal with if they're all on the same smoothing group. If you go like a 90 degree angle, then another 90 degree angle straight afterwards. So if you split the, if you just put them on a separate smoothing group and then split the UVs as well, then it makes it a lot easier for the normal maps to deal with. Like you get a much better result out of it. And seeing as this is going to be normal maps, that's something I'm going to have to do here. And that part is pretty much just some maps. And you can see there's like some funky parts that haven't welded properly. So if you just go and weld selected, and then that part, just move that out a little bit to show that you, that's not actually physically welded to it. And why is this doing this? Is it because there is a face inside? It's be yes. Why is there a face inside of my freaking cylinder? You see, this is what happens when you don't optimize properly, or when you leave your optimization to UV. You always find stuff in your UVing parts, I guess. Um, when you just find random crap like that in your model, you had no idea it was there. But UV is really good at finding stuff like that. Apparently it's also really good at hiding UV shells. It's a real pain if you don't have your editable poly on vertex sometimes when you move uh, into your modifier for unwrap, it just hides everything. Like, it's, what, the, what the hell's going on there? No idea. But that's good enough. Let's put checker on that so we can see that it's finished. <coughs> move on to the next cylindr cylinder cylindrical shape. God, you can tell I'm in a wake long, can't you? Uh, this is just a tube, so it's going to be real hard to unwrap this part. I'm uh, just going to make sure this seam obviously is on the bottom again. The seam being there. Let's move that off to the side as well. Done. Next part. There's actually two of these, which are exactly like a, a cloned mesh, basically. Like I just copied it to two separate instances on the actual model, so I'm just going to unwrap one and then just copy it because it's easier than trying to save and load EVs and stuff. Accidental stack collapse. Oh no! Uh, I'm gonna plane them up these separately as well, actually, because they are. Ah, oh, normalize map. Am mine. Yeah, these are gonna be on a separate smoothing group as well. On the like normal map baking, so. Want to make sure those are split UVs as well if you're different normal maps. And this part here is uh, exactly the same, so we're just gonna delete that, clone this up. Seeing it's exactly the same model anyway, we've just saved ourselves the time and effort of having to. Ooh. Sorry, the, uh, the UVs are a little bit stretched there, so let's go back and fix that quickly. So what you get for being less than comprehensive about this stuff. Um, in preferences, uh, if you have constant updating viewports on, then you 
can see in real time in your viewport, viewport, viewport what happens when you are scaling. So we need to scale down to be smaller to get the squares looking more like squares. So that's fine because that's going to be easier to pack and look more like the shape that it actually is. So that's always handy. And then let's drag that up and clone that. And then let's unwrap this part. The next part on the agenda. And this part is going to be want to be on a separate EV or a separate EV shell because that is on one swimming group. And then this part as well is going to want to be on another UV shell because that's the mother spinning group. And then these two can be cylindrical mapped together. And we want to put the seam, thick seam display. We want to put the seam on the bottom somewhere because that's obviously the first away from the player camera. So that's that bit done as well. Good enough. Uh, what next? Let's go for the front sights. Shouldn't be too difficult. Um, Yeah, let's do a planar Z axis and then relax. And that should Yay. Like on, on really simple stuff, relax is easier like that. Like if you can do this without relax, you'd have had to done a, a planar map on this face on a separate angle and then weld it. Uh, like stitch it even. It's just easier not to a lot of the time. Uh if we just do all these faces as well. And then just like slightly move them apart because you don't want them to be completely overlapping because you'll get some weird mip mapping, mip mapping going on at some point. And then play it Z that and relax. And again, these are on separate smoothing groups, so you want them to be on separate UV shell, which often leads you with like a uh, boxy shape, so like. Um, uh, mechanical modeling, like real hard surface shapes like this, you end up with a lot of really like single face UV shells, but it kind of doesn't matter that much because uh, like it looks fine in the end anyway. So that's really what the goal is. And these are not on a smoothing group, and they should be. So let's go and put those on a smoothing group now. Although not that smoothing group. <laughs> And those, let's just do a planar Y and relax. Because as long as it's only like got one axis that it can relax on, it really can't go wrong at all, which is quite handy. And that's on a separate smoothing group as well, and this is going to be on a separate smoothing group. And this is on a non, uh, a non planar axis, like it's not on an X axis or a Y axis, so you just use best align. And on some faces that seems to work pretty well. So I find it's always best to put stuff around, like organize your like uh, your UVs in a way that you can know what stuff is. Like uh, obviously this shell here is going to be like the, the front part around here, and this part's on the top. It's going to be the top. This part's on the side. It's going to be the side there. It's just generally easier like that. So like this part is going to be the top of this bit, so you get put on top of it and then that's there, even though it needs to be that way around. 